let's set up your WP Dev Course exclusive 90 day free trial at SiteGround where you can easily install and play with WordPress. SiteGround is one of the highest rated hosting companies currently available, and they have inexpensive shared levels all the way up through managed WordPress plans you can use to run multiple websites and resell hosting to clients. In this video, you'll set up your free hosting account with SiteGround. You can use this free account for your coursework and for hosting your sites in the future if you choose. By the end of this video, you'll have your first live internet hosting account and a place you can use to experiment with sites you build in this course. Start by visiting the students site at students.wpdevcourse.com and scroll down till you see the student resource page. You can hit this resource page button or the resources button at the top or the bottom of the site. And on this resources page, you'll see that there's a long list of resources and links that lead you to different places that we will use in this course. If you scroll down near the top, click the site ground link and it'll open up a new tab where there's a three months free hosting sign up page and you can just click sign up right there. Fill out the small amount of details on the form and what you're getting here is a startup hosting plan at SiteGround for three months for free. Over at SiteGround, they offer a discount for any period of time you sign up for at once, but they don't offer free trials at SiteGround. So this is a special exclusive offer for students of the course and just go down and the last choice is please enter your domain. If you do own a domain name that you'd like to use with this hosting account during the course, you can activate it with an existing domain. You could purchase a domain name right here if you like, but I don't recommend that. And it's easy enough to activate an account without the domain and you'll be given a free domain to work with for the course and the length of time that we have the hosting account for. So just click the box that you've confirmed and click pay now, which will be zero dollars and let SiteGround set up your hosting account for you. I got the message your order was successfully submitted and you'll be receiving an email and you can log into the customer area right here to log into your site. Now you might want to bookmark this URL from SiteGround, it's UA for user area, dot SiteGround.com. And that's what I've done in my website bookmarks right here in Firefox. I'll just close that toolbar for now. And over in my email, you can see that I've received an email from SiteGround. Congrats, you're an, you are now a SiteGround client. And they've assigned me a username. And the password is the one that I chose during the signup process. So make sure you remember that password that you used and use your username that they've assigned you. Control C to copy and I'll go back to the login form and I'll go ahead and log in with my username and password. I'll click remember so that I don't have to remember that password and retype it every time. And now I get to choose whether I want to start a website, transfer an existing website, or thanks but I know, don't need help. It's important that you choose this third option because we're going to be installing WordPress using the SiteGround tools and configuring WordPress sites for the course. So now that you've chosen the third option, thanks but I don't need help, click proceed. This is the SiteGround user area. And whenever I log into SiteGround, I'll usually go right to the second tab called My Accounts. And let's take a look at what you've got. I have a primary domain here, which is gregd1.sgedu.site. And we can use this domain throughout the course to build websites and do all of our coursework. And there's some other information that you can look at as you go down here. These are your name servers. If you do own a domain name and you'd like to point a domain at your SiteGround site and use it, but we don't have to do that during the course. Next, let's click the red button, go to cPanel. And cPanel is short for control panel. And what we do want to do is access cPanel securely and leave that button checked and then remember your selection and click proceed. Once the cPanel is loaded, you can explore by scrolling down a little bit all the different utilities that we have as a part of our SiteGround website hosting. 
Let's finish up this video by installing WordPress and activating it for our testing domain, whatever that is up at the top here. So if you see near the top, there's an auto installers section and you can just click the WordPress button. It will open a utility called Softaculous, which comes bundled with cPanel often in different hosting companies' accounts. And you can just go to the Install tab, and let's choose where to install WordPress inside of our domain right here. Now, we'll leave HTTP colon slash slash for now, as opposed to setting it up under a secure HTTPS, which we'll go over la later in the course. And let's leave the domain as our root domain, and we won't put a separate directory here in the directory place. We can just leave everything else as the default, except what I'm going to do is choose a username that's easy for me to remember, along with a password that I can remember as well. So I'll just choose that. Use a password that I can remember, and I'll use a valid email address so that I can test the email sending capability from my WordPress account, and that'll be my admin email address there. We can just choose whatever we need down here. Let's just leave all of the defaults, and we can go down and click Install. Should only take a couple of seconds, and we'll have a WordPress site ready for us to start playing with. Great, that just took about five or 10 seconds. And it says, congratulations, the software was installed successfully. And it gives me a URL, which is my regular SiteGround educational site URL that I'm using, along with an administrative URL, which is basically the URL of your hosting and domain at your hosting account slash WP admin. We don't have to save or remember that. We're gonna be using this URL a lot in different places in this course. If you go right over here and roll over this little widget control panel button right here, that'll bring you back to the C panel. We don't really need to go back there again because we're gonna be managing WordPress through its admin URL. But let's go ahead and open up a new tab in your browser. And let's go to the URL where your WordPress site is set up. If you're in the C panel, that's at the very top here. And I'm just gonna hit Control C. And it's also down here under Main Domain. And I'm gonna open up my new tab and just paste that URL right into the address bar. And I've got a new WordPress site set up. This is a default page that SiteGround creates for you with a little bit of links to some resources. And if we wanna to get to the admin page, we can go to this login button right here in the sidebar. And I'm gonna right click that and click open link in new tab. That way I'll have the login and admin area open at the same time as I have the actual site open in two different tabs. Remember, I used a certain username right there and I'll type my password that I made sure and remembered, and I'll click Login. And I can ask Firefox to remember that password for me, so it's easy for me to log in next time. Here's my WordPress dashboard. And boy, doesn't that feel great. There's nothing like getting a nice, fresh WordPress installation installed and ready to go on your new server. Remember, it's my URL here that I'm using with my SiteGround free account. Mine is gregd1.sg for SiteGround, edu.site, slash wpadmin. And that URL without the wpadmin is where my website lives. We can use this SiteGround account to create multiple WordPress environments for all of our coursework here at WP Dev Course. Lastly, let's configure the WordPress dashboard and our WordPress installation just a little bit from the default installation that SiteGround gives us. First off, there is a welcome to WordPress area right here that you can dismiss up here on the right hand side if you like. And we've got a default plugin from Automatic, the company behind WordPress called Jetpack. For now, I'm just gonna go into plugins installed plugins and take a look at our plugins list that come with this SiteGround installation. 
I'm just going to deactivate Jetpack for now, and we'll leave the other two default WordPress plugins deactivated as well. The other thing I'll do is go into Settings, and under General, I can now rename my site title, my tagline, and I'm also going to choose my own time zone, as well as the what I want the week to start on, and my default language. So go ahead and do that, and I'll pause the video and be right back. I changed my site title to SiteGround Testing Site, made a tagline Experimentation for WP Dev Course, and then I just wanted to show you, as you go down here to Time Zone, if you open it up, you can get a lot of UTC numbered time zones, and if you know your own, you can do that. But there's also a number of different cities here. But if you just start typing a letter, you can go to a city that's near you. It's easier to find them that way. And then I'll click Save Changes. Usually get a green line when your settings are saved. You can close those notifications by going to the right hand side like I just did. And then the second and third thing I always do is I'll go down to the media settings. And I like to uncheck the organize my uploads into month and year based folders just so I keep all of my images and files that I upload into the media library into one folder I can access in one place if I want to. So I'll save those changes. And then finally, I always go into permalinks and I'll choose post name, the best permalink structure for SEO for the search engine optimization. And it's the simplest gives you a slash and then the name of the page or post that you're creating. Then I'll just go down and click Save Changes once again. And now I have a fresh WordPress installation that's ready to go and I can start building sites. In the next video, we'll set up a free managed hosting account at Flywheel, one of the fastest and most secure managed WordPress hosts available. Let's go. Managed WordPress hosting provides the fastest loading websites, takes care of security, and has easy to use management for client sites and your own. Flywheel's simple, beautiful interface makes it easy to use your hosting account and create managed WordPress sites with pass it on billing transfer or bulk accounts for reselling to clients. Flywheel's free demo site is usually limited to 14 days. But for WP Dev Course students, they've provided a 60-day demo site for coursework and testing. In this video, you'll sign up for your free Flywheel hosting account and development environment with an exclusive WP Dev Course student discount if you want to continue with Flywheel. The coupon code on the student resources page gives you at least $300 off an annual bulk hosting plan with Flywheel if you want to get set up to resell hosting to your clients. Let's check it out. Just like in the last video, let's start by going to the students.wpdevcourse.com resources page. And that's available if you click the link at the top or the button as you scroll down from the home page down here. Just click resource page. And on this page, as you scroll down just a little bit, there's a link to the flywheel sign up page. And the promotional code that I mentioned before is right down here. You can use that later. Click the Flywheel link and you'll go to a Flywheel sign up page exclusive to this course. I've already filled out some of the fields right here, clicked the Agree button, and then I clicked Sign Up. I was taken then to a page with a welcome video where I already had an active account. Go ahead and take those steps for yourself. And once you have an active account at Flywheel, you'll also see that you have a welcome email inside of your email account that gives you a little bit of information with your username and your email you've used and a login page. Again, like the SiteGround account, I'll bookmark this login page, which is app.getflywheel.com. And that way, it's easy to get back to in the future. Back inside of the browser, there's one more step you need to take to activate your site and be able to set up a new demo site. And that is to verify your account. If you just click new site, you'll see that you'll get to a create a new WordPress site page. 
but don't start filling in the WordPress site details just yet. You can click your verify your account now button right here. Or if you go up under your profile drop down, you can click verify account here. There, you'll be able to go and verify with a text message to your phone, or you can enter a credit card. I'm going to verify with a text message, and you can do the same. Just place your phone number right in there and click send code, and it'll give you a message verification has been sent. And then you just enter the six digit code that they send to your phone straight in here and click verify. I'm going to enter my six digit code. It came in about two seconds straight to my phone. And now my account's been verified. So that means if I want to roll over and click the new site button, I'm right here on the create a new WordPress site page. And I can go down and start entering some site details. I'm just going to enter a few details in here. I'll pause the video and I'll start it back up when I'm ready. I chose a username for my WordPress site that I would remember and a password that I put in twice that I need to remember as well. Also, you can choose your own temporary domain and it'll be whatever you place here, dot flywheelsites.com. That can be the domain you use to do your coursework and to set up a site before you have a real domain pointed to the site. As you scroll down, you'll see that you can pay now, or you can add it to a bulk plan if you have one, or you can click My Client Will Pay Later. I'll just scroll to the bottom and click Launch a Demo Site. And it really only took a few seconds for this site to be created for me. You can see that it says I have 61 days left at the top of my dashboard for this site, and it is password protected. And that just means when someone tries to browse to this domain right here, they're going to be asked for a username and a password. And they use an interesting, memorable password system. Mine is Aquatic News at this point. And that can be changed. The username is always Flywheel. And so all I have to do is go up here and click WordPress Login. And that'll open up a new tab. And this is a browser authentication that Flywheel places just as an additional layer of protection or so you can hide your development site while it's being made from clients or anyone else. I know that the username is Flywheel. And this is where that memorable password comes in handy. Because if you don't remember it, you can't go back to a previous tab when you're using browser authentication. And so I remembered that password and I'll hit OK. I can have my browser remember that for future use. And now I'm at the standard WordPress login page. I can put my username that I chose along with my memorable password that I picked and click login. I'll have the browser remember that password as well. And there I am. That great feeling comes over me when I get a new, fresh WordPress installation started. Again, we've got the Welcome to WordPress standard message that I can dismiss by clicking at the top right. And if I go over to Plugins, Installed Plugins, just like we did before, there's no standard plugins loaded inside of your demo sites. But I will take those couple of steps that we did with our new SiteGround site in the last video, and if you'd like, pause the video now and go ahead and make those steps yourself. I hope you could remember those little changes that we made to set up our site for development in the last video. But I'll show you what I always do. I'll go into Settings, General. And then I'll just name the site if I want to. I called it Flywheel in the setup, so that was okay. Just another WordPress site is the standard tagline. And I'll just type experimentation, as I usually do. And the addresses are there. We'll scroll down a little bit further, and I'll choose my own time zone. And I'll go to the bottom and click Save Changes in the General Settings. Then I go to the Media Settings. And I'll always uncheck this Organize My Uploads into Month and Year-Based Folders box so that I can upload my files while developing a site all into the same folder. Great, the last one is permalinks. 
and I click post name because that is the best SEO and it's just a habit of mine to create that from the very beginning. And I'll click save changes. Now there's one more plugin that's permanently installed inside of flywheel sites, which is called limit login attempts. Let's just check it out. What we'll do is look at the limit login attempts settings just so we know what they do. Basically, this is a security protection that prevents brute force attacks from using up your bandwidth and slowing down your sites that are at a managed WordPress host like Flywheel. So it only allows four times before the 20 minute lockout occurs. And then you can only have four lockouts and then you'll be increased to 24 hours of lockouts. And so this is a good standard setting to leave. You don't have to change the options right here, but it's good to know that this exists in the flywheel sites. Well, that's it. A nice fresh WordPress installation to start learning development or creating a new site. Let's check it out. I'll roll over flywheel, the title of the site and right click visit site and open it in a new tab. Now, if I look at it, this is my site. Great. One of the things I like to do as well that we didn't talk about in the last video is to get rid of this WordPress admin bar so that I can really see what the site looks like to visitors without having that logged in admin bar at the top here. To do that, go back into the WordPress dashboard and under users, click your profile. You can also get there from rolling over your name up here and clicking edit my profile. What I'll do is just uncheck the show toolbar when viewing site checkbox, and then I'll update my profile there. Now, when I go back to the live site and click refresh or reload, that's what the site really looks like to visitors at this point. In this video, you signed up for the excellent managed WordPress host flywheel, where you get an exclusive 60 day free demo site to work with. You installed WordPress using the simple Flywheel demo sites setup. You can use your Flywheel account for no charge as part of your coursework or to develop websites for clients and pass on billing to them. You can also set up your business to host your sites in one of their bulk accounts and resell the hosting to your clients along with website care and maintenance for recurring income. In the next segment, you'll install MAMP to set up a complete server on your local computer and you'll be installing WordPress manually. By hosting WordPress on your local computer, you'll be able to develop websites privately, experiment with WordPress, and create projects without relying on an external server or needing an internet connection at all. See you there.